Get ready to see how I turned a $5 Walmart plastic tray and $3 in materials into this custom made high end farmhouse tray, plus adorable farmhouse decor to put on top. And as always, DIY treats. Welcome to my channel, Craft, Eat, Repeat. Hi guys, it's Anika, and welcome to my channel, Craft, Eat, Repeat. So today I have some farmhouse DIYs for you, and I have got to tell you, I am in love with these DIYs. So these weren't really even in the plans. I was just walking around Walmart getting groceries, and I saw these summer um, trays and buckets and things that they had out, and my brain lit up, and I was like, I know exactly what I'm gonna make with that. So I always get really excited when I have an idea and it actually translates into reality looking at least halfway like how I wanted it and this time it just came out beautifully. So I really hope you guys enjoy it. If you're new to my channel, welcome. Thank you so much for stopping by. If you like what you see, please go ahead and subscribe. Everybody hit that notification bell so you'll be notified when my next video comes out. And when it's over, give this video a thumbs up and let me know down in the comments which one was your favorite or as always, you can just say hi. Okay guys, it's time to craft. So this is a plastic tray that I found from Walmart. They had pink, blue, a bunch of different colors, all very bright, but I wanted to turn this into more of a farmhouse neutral looking tray. So I got a piece of poster board from Dollar Tree. I traced around the outside of my tray. I cut out my oval and then I needed to trim it up to fit it inside the tray since it was slightly bigger from tracing the outside. So I went ahead and I trimmed all of this up and you guys, when you're doing this step, you wanna make sure that you trim it so that it fits very close to the edge, but that there is no overlap at all because once we put our wood on the tray, it's gonna be an even tighter fit and we want it to slide in easily. So I trimmed some off, I placed it in, I saw where it was still pressing up against the sides and I kind of drew a line so I could see exactly where I needed to trim. Now I wanted to do kind of a herringbone pattern with my wood pieces so I needed to find the exact middle of the tray. There's a little knob there so I just used my paint pen and colored right on top, placed my poster board on it, pressed down, and when I lifted it up I had a little mark right at the center of my tray. Next, I looked at my handles and I just kind of eyeballed this. I tried to find the middle and make a dot in the middle. And then I drew a line to connect all three of those dots. Now you can just do your wood pieces straight across and you won't even have to go through this to find the middle of your oval, but I wanted to do that herringbone pattern. I thought it would make it look really high end. So I took the extra time to mark a line all the way down the center of my oval. Next, I wanted to paint my tray and I like to use this plaster color. You guys, I realized afterwards that I did not need to paint the middle and paint is hard to find these days, so just paint the sides. I use these large craft sticks that I got from Walmart. They also have large craft sticks at Dollar Tree or you can use the smaller ones. It just depends on whatever you want your tray to look like. I needed to cut it off so that it would be nice and straight and you want to get your line as straight as possible which is why I used the ruler initially and next I just used my first stick to mark off the line for all the rest of the sticks. Also because my sticks would not reach the outside of my tray without ending I went ahead and I cut them in half this way I could use multiple pieces and it would just look like it was part of the pattern instead of me running out of the length of the stick. This pack came with about 45 craft sticks and I used a little over half. I used 24 craft sticks. I did have some extras left over from that but you want to make sure that you do have extras in case some of them crack and you need to replace them. After I had them all cut with one end cut off and all of them cut in half, I used this Waverly Wax to go ahead and stain my craft sticks. 
I just rubbed it on with a lint free cloth and then I wiped off the excess. Make sure that you get the sides of your sticks. This is why I went ahead and stained them before putting it together. I wanted to make sure that all the sides were completely covered before I put them onto my tray. Once my stain dried, I was ready to go ahead and assemble my tray. I've lined my craft sticks up in this herringbone pattern and I did it right along this middle line that I drew making sure that the bottom of my bottom stick and the top corner of my top stick were right along the line. This kind of made it more centered and you guys if it's not perfect it is okay. This tray is so beautiful and you're not going to notice if it's slightly off. So I glued them onto my poster board and you guys when you're gluing this make sure that the stick is pretty much where you want it to be when you put it on because the glue does not slide very well on this poster board it adheres pretty quickly also i don't plan to put anything too heavy duty on this tray but if you want you can use a stronger adhesive like gorilla glue or e6000 the hot glue did the job for me I'm just going to continue in my pattern putting one stick on top and one right next to it slightly lower and this is going to create my herringbone pattern. Now I used the sticks with the rounded ends when I knew that they would be hanging off the edge of my oval and any time where that stick would not reach I just put another one of my pieces without the oval on and then I put the oval on the end. You'll see what I mean when you see the finished product before I cut all the ends off. Now because I'm human and I couldn't get the sticks at exact 90 degree angles every time, if there was any place that looked like it might have a gap because I didn't cut my stick straight, I just went ahead and I put some of this brown chalk paint right onto my poster board. That way if there was a tiny little gap you wouldn't see the white peeking through. But honestly you guys when you look at this as a finished product you don't really see those little mistakes anyway. Once I got to the bottom, I went ahead and did the same process going up from my starting point. And you guys, I kind of got this idea in my head and I was putting it together as I was filming it for you. I do think it might have been easier to just start at the top, but you can play around with that when you make yours. As you can see, I've got most of my craft sticks placed onto my poster board, and there are some where I needed two of those rectangular pieces before I put a rounded piece on the end, but it all comes out beautifully. Next, I needed to go ahead and trim up my sticks before cutting close to the oval. This just made it easier for my hand to fit. And you guys, when you do this part, make sure you use a very sharp pair of scissors. If your scissors are too dull, your craft sticks are just going to kind of shred up and roll up on you and you don't want that. So make sure you use a sharp pair of scissors and we are going to cut very, very close, as close as you can to that poster board because we want it to fit into our tray. Now when I was cutting one piece did pop off but that's where I had those extra pieces that I told you about in the beginning. I was able to just glue another piece on and trim it up and cover up that space easily. Once I was ready to put it in my tray, I did have a few spots that were slightly too big to fit into the tray, but I was able to trim those up. Because these sticks can shred when you cut them, that's why we want to cut our oval of poster board as close as we can to the right size at the beginning, maybe even slightly smaller than you need it to be, just so that this step goes a lot more easily. Once I had it trimmed up and it fit perfectly, I just put some hot glue into the bottom of my tray and I had to kind of readjust 
this way and that until I found the exact way my bottom was supposed to fit into my tray. I pressed it down and it looks so gorgeous, you guys. The camera does not do it justice. This pattern looks so pretty. Next, I wanted to just put a little detail around the handle, so I'm using this jute rope that I have. If you've been watching my channel for any length of time, you know this is my favorite rope. I use it all the time. I get it off of Amazon and I will link it down in the description box for you if you want to get some. But you could also use the twine that they sell at Dollar Tree to do this step and it would look really nice as well. That twine's just a little bit thinner and I like the thicker rope that I get off of Amazon. So I'm just going to wrap it around, snip it off, and hot glue it on there. And then I did the same thing to the other handle. And that is it, you guys. It looks so simple, but I cannot tell you how beautiful this looks in person. If you're going to put any food or drinks on it, I would recommend going ahead and sealing that wood. But I am just in love with this, and I cannot believe I put this together for $8. Next, I just wanted to make some farmhouse decor to go on top of my tray. So I used this mirror that I got from Dollar Tree. I just love the pattern on it. It's so pretty. I went ahead and took out the mirror from the frame and I'm going to paint that mirror with some white chalk paint. While that's drying, I'm going to go ahead and take some greenery. I believe this is some greenery that I got at Michael's a few months ago. It was just $1.50 or $2 for each pick, and I've just been using it all throughout the spring and now into summer. I think they're really pretty. I went ahead and just cut off four pieces of greenery, and because I had cut them a little short, I had to hot glue them together. If your greenery has a longer stem, you can just hold them together in the middle, and that should work just fine. Once I had them together, I was ready to wrap some jute twine all the way around the middle. I just wanted to cover up any parts where the hot glue was showing and then I snipped it off and glued the end. Now in order to attach this to my frame, I just took another piece of twine, put it through the frame and wrapped it around two times and then I tied it in the back and that was holding it very securely. I tied a tiny little bow with my jute twine and glued that right in the middle. Next, it was time to go ahead and put some letters on my mirror that I have painted white. Now, I actually think this is really adorable as it is, and I think it might even look cute to glue one of those tiny little um, clothes pins onto the front and you could put pictures on it. That would be so cute I'm gonna go ahead and put some letters to spell home onto my frame though So I grabbed these stickers I got them from Dollar Tree and I'm just going to place them right onto my mirror Trying as carefully as I can to make sure they're nice and straight For the O I'm just going to take a little more of that greenery and form a loop and then I'll glue that onto my frame as the O And that's it. I just love how this came out. It was super easy, but really I could change this if I wanted to. I could just flip that mirror over and put pictures on the other side. So I wanted to add a few flowers to my tray, so I did a super quick DIY to add a little personality to this mason jar. I went ahead and I took the lid off of it and I painted the whole thing with white chalk paint. Once that was done, I went onto the internet and I just found an image that I thought was cute. I'm not going to link it down below because I did not create this image, so I don't 
want to share it with you but you guys just put in farmhouse animals or farmhouse style there are so many cute graphics that you could use for projects like this I'm gonna go ahead and cut it out as close to the edge as I can um, that's just a preference of mine I don't really like to see the paper around anything that I'm decoupaging unless it's part of the design element that I want I'm also going to use my X-Acto knife to cut out the pieces in the middle. You don't have to do that, especially if you have yours painted white that does kind of blend in, but I decided to do that detail just for my own happiness and to make my eyes happy. Next, I'm gonna take some Mod Podge and I'm just going to take my little animal and I'm just going to use the Mod Podge to cover them over. Now, you could put some Mod Podge on the bottom if you want to, kind of as a glue. Typically, when I'm doing just an easy, quick project like this one, it doesn't tend to need it and I always end up getting wrinkles, so I usually just put it on top and that works for me. Of course, you should do what you feel looks best. I'm also going to put some Mod Podge around the sides and all around my mason jar just so that the finish of it is all the same. And here's what it looks like when it's dried. It's so cute. I went ahead and spray painted my lid. You don't have to do that part. I just had some Rust-Oleum ru metallic rust that I like to use sometimes. And I'm going to leave the inside out of the top of my lid. This way I can put flowers, but I'm gonna save it for later. I'm going to just add some twine around my mason jar because as you guys know, I love twine. I add it to almost everything that I do and just tie off a little bow right in front and I think it looks adorable. I already had this Waverly antiquing wax out from using it for my tray project so I'm going to use that to add a little bit of distressing. You could also use paint, brown paint, black paint, whatever you'd like. But I'm going to use a dry brushing technique, which means I'm going to wipe most of it off onto a paper towel. And I'm just going to just put a little dab here and there to make it look aged and distressed. And that's it. A super quick project, but adorable and very customizable. Okay, so I already told you guys at the beginning which one my favorite was, but I'm interested to know which one was your favorite. Head down in the comments and let me know. So I am so sorry, you guys, that I am sweating on camera, but on the first warm day that we have in my town, my air conditioner decides to give out. It's been like randomly 30 and 40 degrees out of nowhere, and finally it's warm and I'm sweating to death. But it's okay because the kids and I did some DIY treats in honor of summertime just to give a little meaning to this warmer weather that we're having and I really hope you enjoy them. Okay guys, it's time to eat. For this quick and easy treat, you're going to need some vanilla frosting and you're going to need to put some blue food coloring in it, stir it up and that's going to make some water for our treats. I'm using this brownie but you can use cupcakes, cookies, whatever you'd like. I'm gonna put my icing right onto the middle of my brownie, and I'm just gonna do a little loop-de-loop -loop with some white cookie icing. Next, I'm going to get a goldfish and put it at one end of my loop, and a stick pretzel to put at the other end, and that's it. I call these my gone fishing cupcakes. The kids absolutely think they're adorable. I hope you enjoyed these DIYs I had for you today. I honestly think this tray might be my favorite one yet. Don't forget to head down to the comments and let me know which was your favorite. And if you haven't already, give this video a thumbs up and subscribe to my channel. And please share this video if you think your friends would like it. Thank you so much for watching and I'll see you next time when we repeat it all again.